Welcome to Unity Church of Chatsworth Online Ministries. Alleluia. 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 And now we have today's Sunday Smile. Michelle? Hello there, Reverend John. <laughs> A couple had two really mischievous little boys. They were ages eight and 10. And they were always getting into trouble. You know, as a matter of fact, whenever anything happened in town, the parents knew their sons would get blamed. The boy's mother heard about a clergyman who had just come into town and he was very successful in disciplining children. So she asked if he would speak with her boys and he, and he agreed, and, but he asked to see them individually. So the mother sent her eight-year-old in. Now, the clergyman was a huge man with a booming voice. And he said to the younger boy, he looked at him very sternly and he said, where is God? Little boy was taken aback. He was shaking in his boots. He couldn't answer him. Clergyman said again, where is God? Little boy was just tongue tied. And for the final time, the minister leaned in and said, where is God? Little boy jumped out of his seat, ran home, ran into the closet, slammed the door. His brother came and found him and he said, what's going on? What happened? He said, we're in big trouble this time. God's missing and they think we did it. The Unity Daily Word we focus on today comes to us from April 30th, 1965, and the word is, I believe. Our affirmation, I affirm God's instant, constant, ever-present power. Why should I ever be afraid or troubled? How is it possible for me ever to be unhappy if God is forever with and within me, only because I do not know it, only because I am not aware of it, only because I am not conscious of it. My conscious awareness of God's power in me is necessary so that the full power may come through me. Only believe. I must believe. But if I cannot quite believe, I can affirm until I do believe. To affirm the truth is one wonderful way to increase faith. To affirm the truth is to remind ourselves of that which is true of us, of God, even before we believe. For by persistent affirming, we shall believe. Affirmation increases, strengthens, and firms our faith. So I affirm God's instant, constant, and ever-present power. Consciously aware that God's power is constantly with and within me, I live each moment fully and joyously. Consciously aware that God's power is instantly available to me, I live each day free from fear of any kind. Our scripture with this daily word comes from Mark chapter 9, verse 24. I believe. Help my unbelief. Our word for today is I believe. And our affirmation I affirm God's instant, constant, ever-present power. And so it is. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Till kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debt as we also forgive our debtors. And leave us not into temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. And today we're going to discuss Michelle Unity Principle number two, is it? Yes. Unity Principle number two from the five Unity Principles. Our essence is of God. Therefore, we are inherently good. This God essence was fully expressed in Jesus the Christ. Mm, thank you, Michelle. Amen. Yes. Amen. Which actually then leads us into our scripture from Mark, I believe. Mark chapter 9, verse 24. Yes. I believe. Help me thou overcome my unbelief. And again, that's paraphrasing. Help me, help me, help me overcome my unbelief. Unbelief. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Michelle. And we can I get an amen to that now? Amen, amen. Amen. <laughs> thank you, Michelle. All right. From the Revealing Word by Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity. The metaphysical meaning of zeal. Zeal, the inward fire of the soul that urges an individual onward, regardless of the intellectual mind of caution and conservatism. Zeal is the affirmative impulse of existence. And thank you, Michelle, for the reading of The Revealing Word. You're welcome. Things That Aren't Here Anymore was a series produced by PBS in Southern California, narrated by Ralph Story, giving us a nostalgic look at things that aren't here anymore. I fairly sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm as I spring forth with the mighty faith to do the things that ought to be done by me. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Reverend John, and good morning to everyone. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. Right where you are today, we're feeling enthusiastic and full of zeal today, Michelle. Yes, we are. And the title of today's lesson, I know there's a part two in there, which was uh, God is the Source, part two. Mm -hmm. And then we also have that interesting subtitle, which is, <laughs> Those Were the Days, My Friend. Yes. And today and every day, I am miracle-minded. Absolutely. And we have a new month. Michelle, so the power... Yes, we do. We have moved into the month of October. And our 12th, from our 12 powers this month, our power for the month of October is divine zeal. Our disciple is Simon the Canaanite. The color is orange. 
And the part of the body is the medulla oblongata, or the back of the brain, actually, the oh. brain stem. Thank you, Michelle. The, All color, right. is, the color is orange. and the color is orange. Orange. I see orange. Orange, it, yes. Everywhere it appears. Yeah. <laughs> and we take a deep breath right where we are and right where you are. As we now focus on that beautiful and delicious prana, that prana healing breath that we are taking in right now, yes. we become still and we move into a marvelous and wonderful affirmation. Again, our affirmation today. You know, Michelle, it's going to sound like last week's affirmation, but we're going to call it good, good, and very good. That's okay. Our, our it's, affirmation. it's something we need to remember. <laughs> God is the, is the source of my supply. Of my supply. Yes. God is the source of my supply. And as we, again, think about this and breathe in these divine ideas. Yes, we can say, yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God, for the prosperity all around us. To each side, above us, beneath us, as us. Yes. And we can think about being enthusiastic today, right here and right now, as again we say and pray our affirmation for today's lesson. God is the source. God of, is the source. Of my supply. my supply. And let all God's children say, and so, and it, so is. it is. Amen. Amen. And Michelle, yes, we're being enthusiastic and full of life and full of zeal today. And yet that song again for me, those were the days, my friend. Are you going to break in a song? <laughs> those were the days we used to sing and dance. And we thought those days would never end, Michelle, as the song says. Yes. And I can feel that, I'm going to call it that vibration Remember when you were a kid, and part of you still is, when you <laughs> went outside and played ball and jump rope and uh, in some neighborhoods, and I recall seeing your neighborhood that you grew up in a couple of weeks, weeks ago, it seems, mm -hmm. where you played jacks. Did you play jacks? Of course. Did well, you play jacks and marbles. Hop scotch, I think it's called. Yes. Yes, indeed. Those were the days. We Those were the days. And we thought they would never end. And for some of us, they never ended, Michelle, <laughs> as we're going to talk about some things today during our three points. All right. But again, we are reminded that uh, King David, David the shepherd boy, was a poet. As we are thinking about poetry and those, what do we say, those words that we are recalling from time to time, similes. Analogies. And Synonyms, all of those words, yes. And those words are meant as helpers today. Mm -hmm. As we're again having our nostalgic moment where we are, we're, we're, we're going to say we're in the present and it simply puts a smile on our face as we remember all of the good things, Michelle. Yes, those yes. good things about the good old days as we move forward into our lesson again we are reminded of the ascent of man the book mm. that i have been reminding everyone about uh, for the last uh, three or four lessons or the last three or four powers i'm going to say michelle i was going to say the last three or four months we've been talking a little bit about that each each yes. time yes and and so again the 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 bright uh, point that we're looking at today is uh, we can make a change and move forward starting when and where? Starting right, right here, here and right now. And right now. Yes. As we are prepared now to move ahead now with our three points for today's lesson. Thank you. Our three points for today are point number one is the Bible scripture. Help my unbelief. And yes, it is a matter of faith. Point number two, things that are not here anymore. Part two. And of course, point number three that we talk about every week in 2024, are you ready to let peace begin with you? Thank you, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Now, again, our scripture is from Mark, 
And we are, I'm smiling as we're thinking about unity principle number two mm-hmm. that speaks about and talks about the divinity of you, Michelle. And you and, and everyone. Our, our neighbors, uh, yes. those uh, folk out there, or the divinity of each and every one, Michelle. Yes. As we, we are look. we are all heirs to the kingdom as we as we say we are all children of god and therefore we are all we are we all have that divinity and as we think of uh, someone mentioned the other day these unprecedented times mm-hmm. that we're experiencing sometimes if we watch the news at uh, 10 and 12 Five, six, and eleven. I'm smiling because uh, sometimes it does mean that this statement is a statement of faith. Yes. So that is to say, it is a statement of I believe. And in fact, when I recall being in ministerial school, we had to write something called our credo, credo. <laughs> yeah. or not just that one thing that we believe, but some others too. And it was understood, I believe, Michelle, I think even in in nursing school, perhaps, you had to write something similar to what you believed. a We we called it our nursing philosophy, but it's the same thing. It's what we believed about our practice. And and as you say that, it's 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 everything that we do, whatever work or whatever we believe, whatever our faith, we have to sit down and think about what it is that we where it is we place our faith and what it is we have faith in. Thank you, Michelle. And again, that scripture does say, the second part of that scripture says, help my unbelief. And you know, the part of that that's always interesting for me when we when we take a look at this scripture, and as you know, this is one of my favorite scriptures. I I I journal on this a lot. And because it is so true that you know, those moments during the day when we're in our meditation, when we're in our quiet place, when we're, you know, away from all of the chaos, it is so easy for us to know our belief. It is so easy for us to sit in our belief. But the minute we get up and have distractions, because we've talked about that before, distractions of things that we need to do on a human level, on a human plane, our belief may shift a little bit. You know, we may not necessarily, if we have a fear moment, we may not necessarily remember that we are heirs to the kingdom. And so I believe, but help me in my unbelief. Help me in my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michelle. We're going to move on now to point number two. Again, point number two was? Things that are not here anymore. Part two. Part two. (laughs) We talked a little bit about this last week. Yes. Yes. Yes, we did. We had a marvelous time uh, presenting things that aren't here anymore, part one. And we talked about many, many things. We talked about things that aren't here. I mentioned uh, the Montgomery Wards department store. Mm -hmm. I also remember talking about Sears. And and I miss Sears. And there were certain conveniences at Sears. And so uh, we're not going to talk about those things anymore, but we are going to talk about a couple of things, Michelle, that we uh, we I feel quite excited about and enthusiastic about. I'm going to start out just with the music, and I'm going to start out with, uh, do you remember 45 records? I do, yes. 45s and 33 and a thirds and 78s. <laughs> and 78s were the big ones. Yes. And I recall being in a store just the other day. And they had, uh, oh, they had a couple of Beatles albums that were selling, they were selling again, and they looked like they were the 78s. Mm. Uh, And I kept thinking, now, where are they going to play these things? There are uh, record players and the needles and those old style, those nostalgic uh, record players. And so I also turned the jackets over because they had the full uh, photograph of the Beatles or uh, actually, I had one that said the Jimi Hendrix experience. Oh, now Michelle, there's something. <laughs> do, you, do you remember the Jimi yeah. Hendrix 
those were the days. That's, that's digging back in our days, yes. And I, I turned the album over, and I think it was $50. So it wasn't a $17. It was that great nostalgic price of triple what it originally sold for. <laughs> so again, I'm smiling as I'm thinking about those vinyl records that kind of inspire me. They mm -hmm. kind of, you know, make me want to sit up and, and listen to all of those wonderful songs again. Now, again, as we're thinking about um, three, just three areas, I also, we didn't spend enough time on these gloves, Michelle. <laughs> the white, white gloves, lace gloves, gloves that have the little frilly parts on the end that uh, my mother and my sisters used to wear to church. Mm hmm Okay, do you remember those? Of course, of course. And you had to wear them in, in church for the full hour? Well, you know, that it, that was the dress of the day. And uh, we, were, we were trained and taught to dress like ladies. That's what we were taught when we were coming hey. up, my sisters and myself. And, um, and when we look back on those times, and, we, and you talked about being inspired, by the music and um, and we were inspired by the discipline that we were asked to follow during that that era. I'll say it say it that way. Um, and we can look back on those nostalgic times as we yes. talked about mm -hmm. and 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 say to ourselves how things have changed. Is that okay? That things have changed. Is it all right that we have moved into a different era? as we so often talk about unprecedented times, but it, it is, it's, it's something wonderful to reflect back on things that were inspiring to us as you talk about being inspired by the music, being inspired by the memories of, of things that felt comfortable for us during that time of our life. Thank you, Michelle. And now we're gonna talk about something that I'm smiling, but I'm feeling some discomfort about, Michelle. Okay. And I'm actually going to refer to, and we have covered the stages of grief before. And in particular, we talked about being in a place of denial mm -hmm. and, and how maybe not so, that's not such a healthy place to be, Michelle, if we're unable to uh, move forward, if we're in a, well, I'm going to call it a stuck place or a place of not moving forward or not admitting, for example, I'm specifically today talking again about customer service issues, Michelle. Yes. And, and loving the idea of Sears and the Sears automotive experience and a customer service technician and also a, a place to uh, wait, a comfortable waiting area to sit in while my uh, automobile was being uh, worked on or the oil was being changed. Do you know, Michelle, I'm, I'm a concerned, actually. I'm going to call it concerned because I was given uh, by a, uh, a technician or a, I was given a 1-800 number, Michelle. And when I called the 1-800 number, I was found myself talking to someone who sounded 19 or 20. And uh, I said, now, do you know the history of customer service, and uh, the person on the other end actually uh, said, yes, they were. I, I asked the other person on the other end of the call, for example, if they knew of a person, Ralph, of the person Ralph Nader, who was a consumer activist, let's say, mm -hmm. and uh, the person on the other end of the 1-800 phone call said that, no, they were not aware of a consumer activist first name Ralph, last name Nader. And so that, again, caught my concern. I, I further uh, was curious and, and more than nostalgic uh, because I had said uh, to the person, I have a list of things that are automotive that are my concerns that I would like to speak to you about today. And the person uh, responded with, or, or at least someone else did, uh, later that day said, you do realize that the customer service people that you'll find at the 800 number are not automotive experts. 
That is to say, they really don't know about the parts on the automobile. Uh, pretty much, I, I heard, Michelle, that you told a joke once about, or at least you were referring to, I only want to put the key in the ignition and start the engine. Yes. And, the- and, and as you talk about that, that brings to mind the idea that there are courtesies that we were used to. There are things that we were used to. There were there were human um, um, uh, courtesies when you spoke with a customer service person or someone. And the issue when you talk about denial is we 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 have a hard time with talking about those issues when they are still part of who we are because of the way we were raised. So um, it, it acclimating to a different way of doing things when you talk about things that aren't here anymore, uh, uh, behaviors, uh, places, um, things that, that we are used to, it makes it a difficult. And as you talk about that in relation to denial, it's like moving through a grieving period as we yes. move through that nostalgia. Yes. So, and, and, those are, and those are difficult steps to take. And sometimes you get stuck in a, a grieving process not just grieving an individual, but grieving um, a process that you had to let go or that's no longer there. And now we move to point number three. And point number three, Reverend John, as we talk about every week in 2024 is, can we let peace begin with me? Can I sit in peace with these ideas that we're talking about today? Can I sit in peace with the idea that change is occurring in my life? Change of things that I have expected, things that I was comfortable with, these changes are taking place. Can I sit in a place of peace in my meditation and also as I move through my day with the idea that yes, I can be nostalgic about wonderful things, but I also can be peaceful with the idea that change is occurring. And I can sit in an idea that when that change occurs, I can remember that I have faith in God and God is the source of my supply. And I can sit in peace with that idea and know that even as change occurs, I still have my place in the kingdom, in the as the heir to the kingdom and in a place of peace with God as my source. Thank you, Michelle. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, thank you. And now it is our opportunity as we move forward with our lesson to have a summary of today's lesson. And again, Michelle, you're so good at it. <laughs> oh, Pashaw. All right. Thank you. As our summary, point number one was our Bible scripture, help my unbelief. And you know, that was just our basic scripture that we use today. I believe, help my unbelief. And it is a matter of faith. That is our point number one. Yes. Point number two, we talked about things are not here anymore. We talked about being inspired by the things that were in our past, things that we remember that we're nostalgic about, that we were inspired by them. But we also have to remember that sometimes we get ourselves into a place of denying that change is taking place. We get into a place of being unable to move forward and stuck because we are looking back on those things. And point number three, can we Can we let peace begin with me? Can we be in a place of understanding that change takes place? And even through all that change, God is the source of our supply, our supply of whatever we need in order to move in and through our days. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. It is our prayer that our lesson has been a blessing to you and you and you and to Michelle and, and Reverend and to me. <laughs> yes. as we now move into that place, that centering place, as we become still and move into a time of prayer and release and reflection. We remember to slow down, Michelle. We're going to slow down and we're going to wiggle our toes, focus on our lower chakras, on our feet, on our ankles. And as we allow that focus to move from the lower chakras into our heart space, 
And again, we feel the love right there, right here, and right now, within us, above us, below us, on each side, as us. And we again take that deep breath as it moves now, that focus moves into our throat chakra. In between our eyes, between that third eye, as we see more clearly now, and yes, to the top of our head, to the top of our crown chakra. And we feel that ray now piercing all that is not of the highest. All around us. As we see our real selves. And again, that focus and energy returns to our third eye and into our heart chakra. To that love center. And we love everyone around us, yes all of our neighbors and friends, all of the little children, oh, I'm thinking even of the newborns. Yes, Michelle, that love, that his love also loves little animals and our pets and, yes, our favorite dogs and cats and so forth. Everyone and everything around us. And we feel grounded now as that focus, that energy moves into our lower chakras and we feel balanced. We take that deep breath in, and again, our affirmation, Michelle, we say and pray together. Together, Michelle. God is the source of my supply. Of my supply. And we breathe that in, and gratefully now we say, thank you, God. 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 And so it is. Amen. It is not I, but the Christ within who does the work. The Prayer for Protection, authored by the Reverend James Dillett Freeman. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And so it is. Amen. Our offertory blessing today, together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive. I praise, give thanks, and am glad. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. The Daily Word is reproduced with permission of Unity, publisher of The Daily Word. Website dailyword.com Our thoughts are free.